Hi, my name is Kevin Fleming, and I received a question from my good friend Jethro Midget, a counselor and instructor at Norco College, who asked me for some data sources and how I might explain underemployment uh, to his class. So we all know what it is to be unemployed. To be unemployed is to not have a job and to be seeking employment, right? Well, there's another term we don't discuss as much, but is probably more important to understand, and that's underemployment. Now, to be underemployed is defined a couple different ways. It's those that are high-skilled employees that are within low-skilled jobs. It's part-time workers who want full-time jobs. Or it's skilled workers with low-paying jobs. These are individuals that are underemployed. They're not at or above the median earnings for their skills and, and their, their desire to contribute in the workforce. Now, there's a lot of different ways to calculate this. There's one recent study um, from the Economic Policy Institute that said, oh, it's only 11.1%. Uh, that's the underemployment rate. But they define it only as those who are working part-time but want full-time work. Or for those who have looked for work in the last year but have given up seeking it. So with that definition, they say, oh, it's only 1 in 10. It's 11% it's of, of the country. A previous report said 12.6 by Gallup. Well, if you actually ask individuals in the workforce, then the number dramatically inc increases up to 46% of Americans who consider themselves to be underemployed, and that's using the definition of those who have part-time work, wanting full-time work, or, and here's, here's the kicker, or if they hold a job that doesn't require or utilize your education, experience, or training. See, there's a lot of people out there that have education or experience, but they're not in a job that is a good fit for them, that, that re will reward them for their skills and abilities. Over 60% of Uber drivers have a bachelor's degree, for example, and there's a lot of, 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 of examples like that. But let me show you the data. There's a group called the College Board, and this is, this is the SAT people. They put out a report called Education Pays, and this is one of the charts from that report where they show females on the left and males on the right. They have earnings on one axis, educational attainment on the other axis, and you show, it shows this range of earnings for individuals at every step along their educational career. And this shows the median, the 25 percentile, and the 75th percentile of earners. It's called a whisker plot, like whiskers on a cat, because of the, the shape this, this chart makes. But what's interesting about this is it takes away um, any part-time seasonal workers or college students. So here in the title, this is just full-time year-round workers, ages 25 and older, that are in the United States labor market. Now, the first thing that may pop out at you is the fact that we still have a gender disparity in this country, where we still do not have equal pay for equal work, and that needs to be addressed. But I want to talk about a two-year degree versus a four-year degree for a moment, and look what the range of earnings are that you can expect to get. If you get a two-year degree in this country, at Norco College or any other place, you can expect to earn between $30,000 and $78,000. That's looking at the bottom of the range for females, the top of the range for males. That's a pretty big range for getting, quote unquote, the same degree, right? Well, if you look at baccalaureate degree holders, then we see it's between forty dollars and $110,000 a year. Again, a pretty big range. But here was my aha moment. This is only the middle 50%. So if you get a two-year degree in this country, 25% of you will earn more than $78,000 a year. And if you get a four-year degree in this country, 25% of you will earn less than $40,000 a year. So anyone who falls in this bottom triangle down here in this shape of the chart for males or down here for females, in that white space, those are the individuals who are underemployed. They are not commanding even the median wage for their education and experience level. Um, and so they are either working part-time or, or not working or working in a job that really is not a good fit for them. So the goal is, how do you align your skills, your abilities, your personalities? How do you get all of your talents and your industrial knowledge and align that with an occupation and a career that really fits your purpose? And you could wake up every day loving what you do, contributing what you do, where someone will pay you to do it and you'll command a wage that is above the median and that therefore is not underemployed. So I hope that helps. Uh, and if you're in uh, Jethro Midget's class, you're in the right spot to really uh, answer the questions of who you are, what are the jobs out in the world, and how do you align the two to make sure you are never underemployed in your future. Good luck.